I'm Jonathan Rushton, a senior lecturer in animal health economics at the Royal Veterinary College in London. As we face increasing problems with the emergence of diseases such as SARS and bird flu, I believe there's a strong need to understand the motivations of people to report and control disease. This needs to take into account all people involved, those working in government, those working in livestock industries, and of course, farmers and veterinarians. One of the bases for gaining some understanding of motivations of all these people is having skills in economic analysis. Now many people associate economics as just a study of money, and to some extent that's true. However, the core of the subject is to understand how we use and allocate money, people and resources such as land and machinery to satisfy our needs of feeding ourselves and our families, and also ensuring that our family members can obtain the goods and services they need to have a sense of well-being. Now that all sounds very simple which probably reflects about what we're talking about in terms of one family. And in our own minds, we're probably thinking about our own situations of managing work, pleasure, and of course, sleep. It becomes more complicated, however, when we have to make decisions at a government level, where some families and individuals may be negatively affected by disease control measures. This, in turn, may put the whole programme in jeopardy. Now, I want to illustrate these problems with the work I was involved in during my time in Bolivia. I worked on a foot and mouth disease detection and control program funded by the Bolivian and British governments. For those of you unfamiliar with this disease, FMD, it is a disease that affects cloven hoof animals and the most susceptible species are cattle. It causes animals to have a fever and leads to blisters being formed on the feet and mouth. Globally, FMD is one of the most economically important diseases, not just because it reduces production in the animals affected, but also because it stops people trading livestock and livestock products. The impact on trade can either be local or international. Now the reason why the Bolivian FMD program began was because an economic analysis showed that the control of FMD would be beneficial to the Bolivian nation as a whole. This analysis considered various things. First of all, it considered the benefits from the program of better production and also better market access for the Bolivian farmers for their beef. It also considered the costs of running better systems of FMD detection, running FMD vaccination campaigns, and improving animal movement controls. The calculations of costs and benefits were brought together in a cost-benefit analysis framework, a tool used by governments throughout the world to make decisions on which programs and projects to finance. Once our program started, we discovered that some Bolivian farmers did not have FMD, and they wanted other actions. And those farmers that did have FMD were not vaccinated frequently enough to control the disease. I was involved in further economic analysis that showed that farmers with FMD would lose money by vaccinating and that they needed extra support to make sure that the national programme was a success. The analysis helped the Bolivian government refine its strategies and gather support for a more targeted campaign. In general, a better use of resources. Today, Bolivia has largely controlled FMD and is looking to declare large zones of the country free of this disease. So during your studies, you're going to learn about how you can actually carry out economic assessments so that you can actually improve the allocation of resources to disease detection and control around the world. And we look forward to welcoming you on our courses.